Doctor, can you explain exactly what colostrum is? And looking on your website, uh, there may be some different de definitions. You mentioned illegal versus actual. Yeah, well, the, the actual definition is, uh, of colostrum is, is the first food that uh, mammals produce um, in the first 24 hours after birth of the calf. Now, mammals have been around for about 265 million years. So it's pretty proven technology. It's, uh, you know, the, um, the, the peptide area that we focus a lot on are, are, are the same peptides in every mammal. So that's why humans can take uh, colostrum from cows or, or, or uh, sheep or goats or whatever. It's all the same peptides, which is interesting. Mm. So we use uh, colostrum. Specifically, we harvest it from cows because it's the most abundant source. And um, uh, utilize that to help primarily heal the gut and normalize the systemic immune, immune system in the human body. So colostrum is the first food that we all get when we're born. Mm -hmm. um, it's that important. It's full of all sorts of nutrition, nutritional components, vitamins and minerals, um, lots of um, uh, uh, small, small levels of growth factors that, that actually heal the gut. And that's one of the reasons why it's useful in humans is to actually help repair the gut because, you know, one of the major issues that we have in health in this world is, is have leaky, leaky gut syndrome. Mm -hmm. And if, if your, your gut is porous, macroporous, that's when you get bacteria leaking into the body and large macromolecules of food that's undigested. And the body is then creating an innate immune response, causing allergies against all sorts of foods. So when somebody's allergic to one kind of food, they're more than likely they're allergic to many different kinds of foods. And it primarily stems back to the gut not being sealed. Because the gut is basically a skin. It's 26 feet of, of tubing, which is technically outside of the body. And if that is so porous and we can't separate the bacteria and the digestive processes and macromolecules of food from the body, then our body just treats it like a foreign pathogen. So it's really important, the message is to heal the gut. And that's, the medical uh, establishment is starting to get that now. It's been uh, talked about for quite a few years, but now they're really understanding the importance of healing the gut. And colostrum with the growth factors in it um, do actually help accelerate that healing process. Because if you look at the small intestine, or the digestive tract, it's about 26 feet long, like I said. And if you lay it out, that small intestine, it's about one square meter of uh, surface area. But when you look at it under a microscope with the villi and microvilli, you've got about uh, 300 square meters, which is about the size of a tennis court. Mm -hmm. So how can you try to absorb nutrients through scarred tissue of one meter versus 300 meters? So you can eat as much as you like, but if your gut is scarred and porous, you're not absorbing the food and getting it broken down. Mm -hmm. So you may eat a lot, but you're not absorbing it and utilizing it. So it's just that important to heal the gut, and you do that by taking colostrum. Colostrum contains about 20% naturally of immunoglobulins, and these immunoglobulins are used to attack pathogens. They don't attack the probiotics and natural pro bacteria that the, the humans and mammals have, but they tend to keep a lid on the population of harmful pathogens in the gut. They're simply the immunoglobulins, which are antibodies, mm -hmm. that's what they are, and colostrum taken orally in the form of cow colostrum actually do uh, keep, uh, keep that level of uh, pathogens down in the gut. So that's one important component of colostrum. You also have in colostrum about 23% of oils and, and these oils are, uh, have a whole range of fatty acids. You know, if we take soybean oil and a lot of um, uh, those types of oils, which are around C16, C18, there are a certain length of fatty acids, whereas uh, cow colostrum contains from C4 to C22. Well, it helps in, a, in a, actually a, a, a human as well, and in, in an infant, to actually heal the brain because the brain is 70% fat, and the body needs the C4, which is the shorter chain fatty acids, up to C22 to help develop the brain. So, so it contains really good nutrients in terms of fatty acids and triglycerides. But in, those, in that, you contain fat-soluble nutrients as well. You know, there's a lot of fat-soluble so um, components that uh, are delivered to the body, and uh, one of them is leptin. Well, leptin is useful because it's a neurotransmitter, and it's used to uh, regulate or signal to the brain quicker that you're full. A lot of babies, it takes uh, quite a bit of time for them to realize that they have a full stomach, mm -hmm. so they keep eating and then they spit up. Well, because the, the neurotransmitters haven't been activated yet because they're so young. Mm. So by containing leptin, 
that actually signals to the brain sooner that you've been, you know, that you're full. Mm -hmm. But there's all these different things in colostrum. There's like thousands of different components. And, you know, I mean, I, I have a research lab that just uh, puts through small sections of colostrum through a mass spectrophotometer, and you'll see hundreds of peaks. I mean, colostrum's been around for, like I said, 265 right. million years. It's proven technology. And it's a challenge for a scientist to actually go in there and try to figure out what's actually in there and what do these things do. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult because in a traditional allopathic medications, you have one thing, one molecule, that directly affects something in a one-dimensional way. So, but it's difficult for us uh, nutraceutical guys to say what is causing this and what is causing that because the body is a multi-dimensional system anyway. Mm -hmm. So colostrum contains all these things. And um, it's just useful to take it as one whole natural product. You know, we, we've been able to separate, you know, peptides from colostrum. And we know that these pept this peptide fraction, and uh, uh, directly uh, these peptides attach to activated T cells, which regulate the cytokine production. Um, and we know that it normalizes a Th2, Th1 immune response. We know how the immune system works now over the last few years. And simply by normalizing the immune system or balancing it is really important. Now, when people talk about, well, yeah, it's important to boost the immune system. Well, why would you want to boost the immune system if you've already got an elevated or overactive or oversensitive immune system anyway, such as with an allergy or autoimmune disease? Okay, those are overactive, oversensitive states of the immune system. You don't want to boost that further. You need to start talking about immune balancing. Keeping the immune system balanced is very important to our survival. You know, we put less stress on our bodies, we're not symptomatic, because basically allergies are a Th2 response in the immune system. Autoimmune diseases are a Th1 response. And it's simply where uh, particular stimuli like uh, H1N1 have produced uh, pro-inflammatory cytokine responses. You, it's simply balancing the production of all of these cytokines. And there's, there's hundreds of different cytokines in the body, and all these are little peptides anyway, which communicate to different parts of the immune system. So it's getting the immune system to communicate and work effectively for, to, to balance the system. And when people have allergies or people have autoimmune diseases, the various different types of autoimmune diseases are essentially the same thing. They just manifest themselves differently in the body. Mm -hmm. It can, that can be skin, that can be, you know, that Crohn's disease can be an, an upper infection or inflammation causing the upper digestive tract. Whereas, um, you know, multiple sclerosis is inflection, an, an, an inflammation of the myelin sheath. There's all these areas of the body that causes autoimmune reactions and they're all given different names. Essentially, it's the same thing. It's where the body is producing too many pro-inflammatory Th1 cytokines. How do you stop that? You simply uh, modulate the immune system by taking something like colostrum peptides which then reset the activated T cells, which are these factories which produce cytokines all the time. Every second of every day it's producing this, these cytokines. It's balancing the production, balancing the communication between cells. And by balancing the immune system, we lower the probability of becoming symptomatic.